For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. There has to be greater awareness. I spent some time writing and 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 speaking on this subject. Uh, there has to be a greater awareness of uh, how the modern information uh, society uh, actually functions. Uh, the, having negotiated the introduction of uh, this technology into India, for example, now we have smartphones in our hands and we have, uh, you know, uh, information and communication technologies which have made each smartphone into a more powerful platform than the most powerful computer 20 years ago. So uh, how, how, how does this work? And I think that uh, it's important for, uh, uh, to understand that uh, this technology and the use of this technology has been uh, driven by a handful of uh, multinational companies headquartered in the United States of America, which means that they operate under licenses given by the government of the United States of America. Now, they operate in uh, jurisdictions across the world and in countries which have uh, opened their markets, they have uh, become household names. I mean, in India, we always say Google this and Google that, but Google is an American uh, company. It's headquartered in the United States. So it follows uh, the licenses given by the government of the United States. Now, in cases of conflict and war and, uh, and, and uh, things like that, we had, uh, those of us who had negotiated had thought that uh, the technology and the economics would be kept out of the politics. But I think the response in the Ukraine crisis has shown that all that people like us have worked to create, uh, to make India a part of a globalized uh, uh, global infrastructure is can be weaponized. And uh, the weaponization of, of these instruments, of these areas, does not need the, uh, the acceptance and the willingness of all the partners in the global network. They can be done by just uh, one country which has the, uh, the legal right to issue the licenses to these companies. Now, the only country I know of which has been able to push back on this is China, but uh, that goes into an area which I think most people in India do not want to go into, which is that you uh, end up with a fractured uh, uh, space of uh, information flows. Uh, there's this big firewall which restricts the flow of information into China and also out of China. And, uh, and we don't want to be in a situation like that where we are globally connected and our information goes to all parts of the globe. But when you look at the flow of information out of the Ukraine conflict, it is uh, quite uh, noticeable that uh, this information is now more and more uh, channelized and restricted. And uh, you, uh, uh, as, a, as an ordinary uh, viewer in India or in South Africa or in Brazil, you will get uh, only what is allowed to be put on by these uh, multinational American companies. And uh, of course, there's this well-known case of uh, a company like Facebook, which has taken uh, what I consider a very extreme step of also calling for violence against Russia as a part of the policy of the company. Now, these companies are not regulated by international law, uh, interstate law. So who eventually at the end will be responsible for any uh, deaths, any destruction that takes place because of the way these companies have allowed themselves to be used? This is a question which is there for the international lawyers to look at. But I think that the sooner we have an international convention on on regulating uh, global uh, in, uh, in cyberspace, the better it will be for countries like India, because we are not the prime uh, owners of this uh, inf infrastructure. We don't own the major companies. We don't own the infrastructure, the submarine cables that uh, transport the data. Even when China builds its own uh, land uh, fiber optic cables through the BRI, we will not be part of the Chinese uh, enterprises. So we will be outside uh, both the American and the Chinese uh, uh, sort of uh, infrastructure uh, uh, dominance, uh, global dominance. And uh, therefore, it's all the more important for uh, countries like India to have a predictable uh, framework which will regulate the use of uh, what uh, today we would call digital space or cyberspace. And I think it's important to say it because as we are on the eve of this two plus two meeting in Washington uh, later tonight and tomorrow, uh, there is one area which is in the media already of the digital dimension of the Indo-Pacific. 
Now, what is India's uh, ability to, to, uh, to influence the digital uh, infrastructure of the Indo-Pacific? It's a question which I think uh, most Indians would like to know, but we don't have this information with us because, frankly, we do not own any of this infrastructure and nor are we creating any of the inf infrastructure which will transport uh, data across the space of the Indo-Pacific. 